Good afternoon. My name is Tavia Dant, and I am the Community Outreach Manager at Colorado State University Global. I am pleased to welcome you to today's webinar. During this webinar, we will be sharing information on the Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership Executive Express Path. Why CSU Global offers this specialization, what you will learn, how you will benefit courses, the cohort experience, admission requirements, and questions at the end. We certainly have a great program for you here today, and I'm, I, I am excited to begin today's discussion. But first, I want to start talking about Colorado State University Global. So we were first started and created by Colorado State University System back in 2007 as the first independent 100% online state university in the US. We have over a decade of leadership in providing quality online education for working adults. Before we get started, I wanted to share a few things to help out with today's engagement. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. At any time during the presentation, please go ahead and submit any questions you have, and we can answer those questions at the um, question and answer section at the end. You'll also see a chat button. Please feel free to introduce yourself there. Tell us what you hope to learn today and where you are joining from today. Just remember to select all panelists and attendees in the dropdown. Finally, after the webinar, we'll send each of you a copy of the recording and a short survey for you to fill out so we can continue to improve our programming. Now, I would like to introduce you to our speakers today, Dr. Dina Samora, Program Chair, and Dr. Tom Woodruff, Lead Faculty for Organizational Leadership. With that, I'll turn the time over to Tom and Dina. Great, hey, thank you, Tavia, for that introduction, and uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, those of you on the call, uh, let me ask you a question uh, to get you thinking about yourself as a leader. Um, have you always known that you wanted to work leading organizations at the level where your decisions drive the future of those organizations? Uh, that work is executive work. And if you're thinking like that, you're thinking like an executive. So what we found is that many of our students arrive on the virtual campus with proven leadership experience, but want to progress to the executive level in their careers. So this is why Tom and I created the Masters of Science in Organizational Leadership with a focus on executive leadership. Individuals interested in this path of study are those with established or proven leadership experience. Those with leadership experience are looking to network with like-minded individuals. So we created a format for learning and experience that reflects what those executive leaders do daily in organizations across the globe. Based on the four leadership competencies, as you see listed here, um, the Executive Express Path provides ways for the evolving leaders to improve in leadership of people in organizations and, and organizational knowledge, as you see here, um, relationship building, and self-awareness. Um, there are many sub competencies within each of those four, but those are the four main competencies. So as we move to the next slide, we see that how Tom and I also understand understood that um, current leaders are busy. Um, they need accelerated uh, learning, uh, yet they still need to cover those necessary competencies uh, for uh, uh, effective and purposeful leading at the executive level. Uh, with our specific learner leader in mind, we developed a path with six-week courses. Um, the students function in the role of a leader within these courses. Um, they learn from experts with executive leadership experience, i.e. the professors. Um, and they have all the materials easily accessible and cost-effective. And the students operate with practical service-minded learning, which is realized through service hours intended to enhance networking and interaction with various communities and organizations. This is what we proudly present to you today. So we move to the next slide and we consider why we offer this path for existing leaders. Um, there's truly a need to prepare existing leaders for the rigors and changes at that executive level. 
Um, the need is to look at various organizations as viable options for these executives. Um, the importance of moving from existing leadership skills and expanding them to the realms of influence found at the executive level could not be overstated. So now let's look into the next slide where we consider uh, what organizations we might include in this um, idea. And you might wonder, you know, what types of leaders are drawn to the executive express path. So we put together, as you see here, this brief list of titles that represent some of the students in our or cohorts. Um, and the, the ideas of what they may be doing. Um, uh, this is just a small, small portion of what uh, represents those executive express path learners that come into our express path. So we're going to delve a little bit deeper into uh, what exactly happens within the courses and with our cohorts. So Tom, will you share with us the uh, diverse organizational leaders in our cohorts? Absolutely, be happy to, and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. And Tavia, would you uh, project up the presentation because we're not uh, the, the uh, participants aren't able to see it at this point. I can read from my notes, but then uh, this way they might even know what I'm talking about, which is kind of scary in itself, you know. Oh, as uh, Dina shared with you, when we designed this path, we kept in mind the. Uh, organizational leadership concept doesn't lock into any one single industry. In fact, it covers the broad spectrums of our whole economy. And so when we talk about uh, the areas that are, uh, uh, all right, excuse me. I'll pull mine up so I can see where I'm going here. <laughs> when we talk about the various industries, we listed a lot of industries that are uh, covered, including the ones that we currently have in existing cohorts. And they come from fields such as construction, educational services, finance and insurance, uh, government, public administration, healthcare, lots of healthcare, military, uh, nonprofits, retail trade, travel and tourism, and wholesale trade. So it covers really a broad spectrum. And again, that's the concept of leadership because leaders, true leaders, can enter any type of organization. It's not their knowledge necessarily of the technical side as much as their people skills that drive an organization. And that's what we focus on in this program. So in the next slide, if we look at the uh, four competency areas that uh, Dina shared with you previously, leadership, organizational knowledge, relationship building, and self-awareness, we put these together based on our knowledge and experience, but also in research. We looked at what are the competencies that are important in today's organizations. And so we, we then went about saying, okay, well, what are the important traits that good leaders should have? And included in these were service-oriented, their emotional intelligence, ethical decision-making, ability to influence people, Leading change. Now, I don't know anybody out there who's experiencing any change now or have for the last 10 years, but uh, maybe just a little. And uh, obviously the whole COVID-19 has changed our focus in life here and how we interact with each other. Leveraging diversity. Now that's obviously a major topic today, okay? What we look at here in this program is inclusiveness. We don't, because diversity tends to look at differences. We want to look at how do we work together, regardless of what someone's background is, how do they become part of our team? We talk about lifelong learning is an essential trait for leaders. And then we talk about our own personal reflection, because honestly, that's how we grow as individuals. You know, we can learn a lot from textbooks. We can learn a lot from life experience, but until we take that personal reflection in, we don't really build it into our leadership toolkit. Uh, service learning, which we will hear more and more about that in this path, and it's an excellent area that we uh, have built a very strong uh, body of foreign. You'll experience that throughout the path. Social intelligence, 
again, reflect on our current society situation and you can see the advantage to that. Team building and finally visioning, being able to look to the future. Where are we going from here? What's our next goal? Next slide, please. Uh, so what will you learn in this uh, executive express path? Uh, we'll analyze how individuals and groups work together. I mean, that's, that's a critical thing. Uh, in, in my career, and I had uh, uh, blessed with an extensive career in leadership and organizations, about midway in the career, I really evolved from the technical side of the business more to the people side, because that's what leaders do. People are what make the world turn. And so we as leaders need to develop all the skills necessary to keep our wheels turning and to keep the organization's wheels turning. And with that, the whole economy. Uh, we're gonna analyze theories of leadership with personal and professional context, okay? So again, one of the terms, and, and Dina can, uh, <laughs> She knows how I cringe when I hear the term real world experience. They were going to show you real world. No, you're living in the real world. We recognize that in this program because that's what life is. Even going to school is real world. And so what we do is relate the leader's experience that are in the path with the textbook information, the theories, and combine those and say, what's how do we learn better? How do we become better from this information? How do we combine this to become a better being? Okay. We justify uh, leadership competencies through organizational leadership theory and practice. Again, I, that's kind of a regurgitation, if you will, of what I just said, but basically that's what it's about. It's combining both of those areas so that we can reflect on ourselves and become better people. And next slide. How will you benefit from the Executive Express path? Well, other than getting to work with Dina and I, I mean, come on, that's a, that's a benefit by itself, right? Okay, I won't go there. Uh, we'll work together to develop strategies and support stakeholders and enhance organizations. And again, it gets down to who are we doing this for? Now think about your life in general. Think about the organizations you're involved with. It's not just the professional side. You got a personal side at home, that's a totally different kind of organization. You have a, probably an educational side, which you're learning from or gaining from or giving to in many cases. You have a spiritual side, which many of us give and take with that as well. And you got a community side. All of those kind of mesh together and that makes up the real person. And that's what we're trying to do within this program. And I'm not gonna um, you know, read all of this to you because you can do that for yourself. But that fourth one, evaluate lifelong learning to advance a cohesive culture within an organization, that's such a critical component. You know, we like to believe that we are lifelong learners and we try to develop that uh, trait, if you will, in everybody we meet. Because if, if we we're really true to ourselves as leaders, we will never stop learning. Okay, next slide. Now, what's your cohort experience going to be like? <clears throat> well, one of the greatest benefits we had from this design, we designed it so that the members in the cohort, the leaders that join the cohort, stay together. So you'll go through a 14-month path, 10 courses, you stay together, you share together. By the midpoint of that, you really become an extended family. It's an exceptional experience. And by the end, if you're celebrating successes, you're sharing sorrows, you're doing all of those things as you would within a community. And that's what it is. So it's a grand experience from my personal perspective. Um, experience with very organizations, ex excellent leadership exchange, now let me hit on that point because the, the last one said it also said experienced faculty role. We require the members in the cohort, the leaders have five years leadership experience and Dina will go into more detail in the, in the next slide. But I wanna hit on that for real quick because we also require, Dina and I, leadership experience in our faculty. They have to have walked the same path. 
not just teach it, not just you know the book knowledge, but actually experience that themselves. That way they can share better with you how you can improve your leadership skills and continue to evolve. Uh, and again, getting on that service learning experience, you'll learn much more about that, but that's really how we learn to take our leadership skills and really become a live part of the community that we serve. All right, and Dean, I'm gonna turn it back over to you. Well, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. that's an excellent summary of the student experience in this path. Uh, what Tom and I had hoped for when we designed this was this true dynamic connection between the leaders across organizations that we are realizing. Um, it is a reality and the cohorts are flourishing. It's exciting to see this happen and we celebrate right along with them. Um, so if you're listening to this and you find that this just might be the experience that you're looking for um, to take your leadership to that next level. Um, here are some program requirements. Um, of course, as we mentioned before, you're going to need that previous leadership experience uh, so that you and your peers interact with the same mindset as leaders. There's really a truly a purposeful reason for doing that. Um, a 3.25 GPA um, in your previous undergraduate work um, a statement of intent, uh, a resume, and a letter of recommendation. Uh, what you'll also need is technology that allows you to uh, share the audio and visual, visual portions of our path, uh, such as Zoom or Adobe Spark, some of these that you might be using already. Uh, to, to sum up the path, we look at the next slide and we can see that there are um, eight courses that you will take um, and, and they will give you that strong knowledge base in theory, uh, communication, decision making, um, all aspects of leadership at the executive level. Um, the emphasis is on applied learning as you heard Tom discuss just earlier. Uh, we hear over and over from our cohorts that um, um, they instantly apply what they learned in the courses, which is exciting for us because that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, the two final courses encompass your service learning experiences and uh, the overall executive leadership plan that you create. Um, and you will um, have a recorded presentation at the end. You can actually use this and, and cohort uh, members have um, for future demonstration of your ability to create a leadership plan, uh, plan executive leadership plan. Um, so in the service learning portion, we get lots of questions about that. You'll take what you um, most likely you're doing right now as a leader in your community. And throughout your program, you're going to record and reflect on those experiences uh, in anticipation of your ninth course, as you see there. Um, during this unprecedented time uh, with the pandemic and so much that we're going through, we're self-quarantined, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're dealing and we're getting creative with the ways that we um, are figuring out how to uh, decision make and problem solve through every aspect of our life as leaders and as leaders in our own home. Um, your creativity and your innovation during this time um, as a leader, uh, along with uh, a an extensive list of suggestions that we've created for you will assist you in meeting those uh, service learning portions of your path. Um, evolving leaders uh, that graduate from our cohort have, uh, they pointed out over and over that the service learning piece is one of the most amazing and transformational portions of their learning in this path. So that was exciting for us as well to see. So you can prepare for an executive leadership role through this accelerated program, ultimately uh, finishing in approximately 14 months. And uh, you can share in enhanced leadership interaction through the networking in this program. Um, it's proven to be a highlight for our current cohorts. Uh, so you'll learn from these executive leaders uh, from diverse organizations. It's very exciting to see where they come from, all, all organizations you can imagine, uh, with specifically focused curriculum. Um, and it's really purpose to prepare you. Um, there's easy access to the, the textbooks and learning materials. Uh, and finally, the service learning experience that brings you uh, 
you know, the best, it brings out the best in you and your personal and professional leadership traits. Um, so I want to thank you for your time and attention today. I'm going to turn this back over to Tavia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom and Dina. That was wonderful. So now we will open the floor up to questions. And we have our first question with what is the average age of participants in this program? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, it really does span. And I think, uh, Tom, you could probably answer this question because you're actually right there with the cohorts in the courses. What do you see? Actually, I see representations of the uh, uh, actually three generations that we have in our society right now. So, uh, and we're, uh, I believe with the newest cohort, we may have the fourth one coming in with, uh, so we have the, the millennial generation, we have uh, Generation X, and we have uh, baby boomers, and Generation Y is starting to come into the scene as well. And so we have quite a mixture. I would say overall, if I had to put an average age on it, it would probably be in the mid 30s to 40 range would be a guess, and that's just purely a guess. Wonderful, great, next question. What is the typical lecture within this course? Also, what type of assignments are required? Great question as well. And I'm gonna give it back over to Tom because he lives and breathes this, and yeah. he's in the courses. <laughs> sure, thank you. you know. <laughs> we actually designed the program, uh, the path to have a mixture of things. We started with the concept of asking industry leaders, what are the skills that you want out of graduates coming out of the graduate program? What kind of skills are they lacking now and how can we help improve that? And with that, in every course, we've designed the opportunity for you to do not just written papers, but also do presentations, either a PowerPoint in some cases, or it might be a video presentation or it might be an audio presentation and we've intermixed these in the courses to have both the uh, both requirements during the course and as we talk about this is the perfect place to fail and by that i don't mean failing the course i mean this is where we want to make mistakes because that's what the learning experience is about so if as we build this cohort and you build your friendships everybody is very open about providing uh, helpful, constructive feedback. So the next time you do a presentation, whether it be a PowerPoint, whether it be a live presentation, whether it be an audio presentation, you'll hear, oh, wow. I didn't realize I said uh, every fourth or fifth word, which some people do. It's a natural thing. We try to tell everybody, <laughs> okay to have a void there for a second and then go on with your presentation so so by the way it's a mixture which i think adds a lot of flavor every course has a what we refer to as signature assignments in the last two weeks the first one is a written assignment which basically covers the the content of the course and your experience as it relates to that and then the second one is actually the video presentation, the voiceover, PowerPoint, or however, we give you some options to be able to do that in your way so that you can make that factual presentation uh, in from uh, week five, if you will, into a live presentation in week six. So I hope that answers that question. Wonderful, thanks so much, Tom. Next question, what types of leadership experience do you typically see? This is, that's exciting to me. This is, thank you for asking that question. Um, I have the privilege of looking over every application and, uh, and, and reading through all the wonderful things that each candidate has done. And I'm telling you the, 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 the variety 
of um, leaders is just, it, it, it's so encouraging and inspirational to me. We have those in the healthcare field. We have those in military. We have those in education. We have those in the, in the corporate sectors, in the Fortune 500s. We have um, farmers uh, that, are, that are leading the way. Uh, I mean, it just, the nonprofits, it goes on and on and on. And it's that, to me, that is so exciting because that truly is what organizational leadership and the study thereof is about. It's about those you know, leaders in every organization because leaders come in every organization. There isn't just the business leaders. There are leaders everywhere. And uh, recognizing that and seeing, and, and that's what makes, I think, this experience so exciting is to be able to be in a, in a cohort with people, leadership from every every organization you can think of and tom you may be able to share some of those things that are acting you know that you see in the course absolutely Nina. and you're right on target with this one of the comments as a matter of fact in a recent uh we have scheduled board meetings as we refer to them <clears throat> and their zoom sessions we have over with the class and we just have the open communication we usually cover a couple topics but we talk openly about what's on your mind, you know, will you have questions about current events or anything like that. But one of the feedback items I hear consistently is the joy and benefit that the members have gained from interacting with people in totally different parts of the country, totally different industries, giving different perspectives on basically the same leadership concepts, yes. but from a different perspective. And that's how we really learn from it. So it's, it's quite a, a mixture, kind of like our country is, kind of like our economy is. And that's a wonderful experience. So uh, yes, it's a broad spectrum, which again, just um, makes us even better. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next question, uh, how long does the course take and how much is the fee? Great question. The fee you'll have to talk to your enrollment advisor about, <laughs> but uh, the um, how long the course takes is six weeks. There are um, you're ta you're taking a course for six weeks and a back to back another course six weeks. You get a week off, then there's another 12, 12 weeks. So you know you're taking two courses every six weeks. Um, and that's why it's so accelerated, and that's why you can finish it in just over a year. So um, that's what you. It, it is. It is uh, rigorous. So uh, be ready for that because it's. It really does. Um, you know, there's not much of a break except that one week break in between every twelve weeks. So, uh, but but you do reach your goal much faster. Wonderful. Next question, do you have any success stories from previous students that took this degree? And this is my favorite question. Yes, it's mine too. And I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna give that to Tom because he, uh, he actually in the last course, he teaches the very last course and that's why I keep referring to Tom, but he, um, he has some of the most wonderful stories to share uh, from the cohort's mouth. So go ahead, Tom. I'd be happy to, yeah, this is a, this is a true joy. And uh, we just, recently graduated our first cohort. Uh, they finished in uh, the early part of April this year and then they were at commencement. <clears throat> they, uh, well, let's see, we had 14 in that first cohort. And of those 14, eight of them reported uh, either new positions or promotions within their organization. And there was another nine who reflected on the benefits of the service learning and how it helped them broaden their interest and broaden their influence, if you will, in getting to know more people. But bottom line, the benefits they gained for it far outweighed the hours spent. And uh, it was just a tremendous success story. I believe we'll see reports on continued growth within that realm. And so it's, uh, the success has been phenomenal, um, possibly even greater than we hoped, but uh, we're both optimists. And so, you know, we kind of hold the bar pretty high. <laughs> but anyway, so I think it's uh, an extremely beneficial program. Wonderful. 
Next question. Is there assistance with transition back into the workforce and accelerating one's um, career path? Oh, I like that question. That's great. That, that part of the cohort is just that, those connections that you make. Part of that service learning are those connections that you make um, in your, the, the networking. And, and we purposefully uh, structured the course this way. Um, now, as far as uh, official transition back into the workforce, um, I, we, you know, we have a career center that will, you know, can, can assist with that. But we, but in our program itself, you're going to find those, those networking, it's just going to happen as part of the cohort, and, which is very exciting because you're, you're networking with all the people in your cohort and then all the people they know within their networks and so on, so on, so forth. So in a sense, yes, uh, there is, there is uh, assistance with that, that transition, uh, but uh, officially uh, it would work through the career center and then, you know, and so I don't know. What do you think? Um, have you seen some of that happen, Tom, in, in the cohorts? Have you seen any of that interaction? Yeah, I actually I have. With the, uh, of course, current events with COVID-19, um, we've actually seen some of our members who had previous positions all of a sudden we were either put on uh, deferment or they've been laid off because of downsizing and everything like that. And they actively went back in to pursue new opportunities. It's interesting to me in the sense that they didn't have the same kind of concern as traditionally I would have heard from, uh, from students. And it's like they've got a lo different level of confidence saying, yeah, that's a bummer, but I'm going to, I'm going to succeed. I'm going to find another opportunity and it's uh, hopefully going to be better. I did want to share one other observation to you You're talking about successes. Two of the cohort members from the first cohort actually were asked by their companies, their organizations, I shouldn't call them companies because they were organizations, to design their own job. Wow. Now that to me was really cool because, hey, I want to do that too, you know, but it really was uh, refreshing to hear that because the organizations recognize the benefits of this program enough to say, you tell us where you can help us the most. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is giving out. I apologize for that. But uh, that's a sign of talking too much, I think. So I'm going to give it back to Dina. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I, another question. Um, what are the challenges um, with taking a six week course versus an eight week course? Mm, first thing comes to mind is time. <laughs> it's, uh, it really is a, it's a, um, time management it will will need to uh, be one of those things that you uh, you know I, and maybe not maybe task management is a better word um, than time management because uh, it will it will sweep you <laughs> and it will take you with it because it's it just you know it's it's set it's not like the eight week where in the eight week program of course you've got a longer time you've got a little bit more time to to cover the same content um, except that with, with a uh, leadership focus rather than an executive leadership focus. Um, the, uh, the eight week, um, you can take some time off uh, if you need to uh, and still come back and pick up where you left off. Uh, where the uh, executive path that truly is, is gonna sweep you, it's gonna take you and you're going to complete that journey in that amount of time in a sequence. In the eight week, there's not a sequence per se, you will take the first course and then it's kind of a carousel model where you can choose the courses you want in between uh, up until the last two capstone courses. So hopefully that answers your question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wonderful. Next question. Are the 10 courses listed on the previous slides the only courses in the program or are there additional courses available? No additional, uh, no, no, it's, it's a lock track, lock, it's lockstep. It's uh, sequence is locked in, um, and and that's why it's uh, the acceleration works um, because it is locked in. So so no, there is not a uh, there's no there are no extra courses to take. Uh, or if, I think what you might be asking is if there are other choices of courses. If that's it, no, it's it's actually lockstep. Um, yeah. 
Wonderful. What are the criteria to qualify for the accelerated program? Criteria are uh, five years of leadership experience, um, a resume of uh, 3.25 GPA, a letter of intent, and a letter of recommendation. Wonderful. Another requirement question. Um, what qualifies as five years of leadership experience? Very good question. What we would be looking for is that you have been leading people in organizations. Um, uh, director, uh, a supervisor of some, uh, you know, depending um, in the Air Force, maybe you've led uh, teams. Um, and, it, and it really depends on the organization. It, you, maybe you served on a board of, uh, for a, a nonprofit organization for, you know, five, 10 years. Maybe, you know, there's, there's um, what we're looking for is true leadership experience. Um, what would not be leadership experience maybe would be um, managing um, uh, accounting processes in a, um, you know, as an accountant. Um, now, now take that in a different way. Maybe you were an accountant that led a team of accountants. That would be the difference between actually, you know, doing the, the uh, tasks and the work that way, um, rather than leading uh, groups of people or organizations uh, in directions through change and, and so on and so forth. Hopefully that that gives you an idea. It's I, I don't want it to sound ambiguous, <laughs> but we that's why we really do look at every application because every every situation's different. It could be somebody that worked as an assistant principal for many years while well, you're leading, you know, leading groups of people. So it just depends on what you are actually doing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And this is our last question. Okay. How many students are typically in a cohort for this program? Good question. Uh, we, we range anywhere from 12 to 25. 25 is the cap. We don't go higher than that. And uh, we're, we're seeing an average of about, what, 18, Tom, something like that? Yeah, I'd say 15 to 18 right now. And, uh, and that seems to be a really good size to uh, develop relationships and everything and develop a bond in the cohort. Well, thank you so much. A big thank you to Tom and Dina for their time and information they shared to us today. And this concludes our webinar for this afternoon. Thank you for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of the day.